It's Power 105.1, New York's hip-hop and R&B, home of The Breakfast Club and the girl Angie Martinez. Honey German in the building with a very special guest. I want you to introduce yourself. My name's Fernando Mateo. And um, us New Yorkers, we know him. We've seen him for quite some time. We've seen you on television. We've heard you on the radio. Can you please tell us exactly who you are? Well, Fernando Mateo is of uh, Dominican background. My parents are Dominican. I was born in Dominican Republic. I never lived there. But I grew up in the Lower East Side. Okay. Um, went to boarding schools most of my life. And at 14, I dropped out of school. I learned how to... I learned the skill, I learned the trade, I learned how to lay floors. I okay. went to flooring school. And at 17, I got married and I started my business. And I've been- Here in New York. Here in New York, Lower East Side. I'm okay. in way between Housen and Second Street. Um, shout out for my people in the Lower East Side. And I grew up there. I mean, I became a child uh, and I became a man there. And um, I've worked all my life. I've worked very hard all my life. And I've given a lot of my resources and money to my community. Um, in 1989, I developed a program at Rikers Island, which was called the MIT program. 1989? 89, 90, and 91. So you've been doing this for a while. Oh, yeah. It, it, as soon as I was able to, to make my, my first money, first thing I said was, let me go back and let me take care of my people. Why? Because that's the right thing to do. <laughs> because they made me who I am. We all know uh, it's the right thing to do, but 99% yeah. of the people don't. They don't because... I guess they, the struggles that I went through and the people that gave me an opportunity yeah. were people from the projects. You know, people that were poor. They yeah. they bought their linoleum for me. They bought their carpet every Christmas. Oh, wow, that's amazing. You know, I knew everybody in my air, in my community. They all were loyal uh, Carpet Fashions customers. Yeah. Fernando Mateo, Freddie, they called me Freddie back then, fans. And um, and I, I just served my community. And, and a lot of my friends wound up being junkies, uh, wound up in jail. And people that I knew, that I grew up with. And I, I felt that it was time for me to go back and, and, cre and create change. That's and amazing. Yeah. And through the course of three years, I saved the city tens of millions of dollars. Wow. Um, I was able to get a lot of these kids that were incarcerated for nonviolent offenses, dealing drugs, jumping turnstiles, peeing in the street, et cetera, et cetera. And I would get, teach them a skill, first my skill, which was flooring. Oprah Winfrey got a hold of it and did two specials on me based on what I was, how I was changing lives at the largest uh, holding facility in the country, in the world, wow. which was Rikers Island. And then I got the electrical union, the carpenters union, the iron workers union, you name it. All these people came and they built a, a, a school in Rikers Island along with me. And we were teaching kids all kinds of skills That's amazing. so that when they came out they wouldn't go back to what they were doing they had a trade they had they a could trade work. yeah and, and and they a lot of them never went back to jail in fact one one of them became a writer he he write he wrote a book you know and it makes me very proud to see that with very little you can create a lot of change you yeah. can do a lot um and and that's what i'm about you know after that i did toys for guns and we got more guns off the st city streets than the history of New York. What year was um, that? 93. 93. 93. Christmas of 93, two Dominican kids committed suicide in northern Manhattan, Washington Heights. And uh, my son, you know, I, we're watching TV and I said to him, gee, what can I do to get guns off the streets? And he was 14 back then. He says, Dad, if I were you, I'd take my Christmas presents and I'd trade them in for, for a gun. So your son came out with that idea. My son, it was his idea. That's yeah. amazing. So I executed on that and it became one of the biggest things in the in the country. Can I stop you for one second? Sure. How hard is it to execute these type of ideas? Because I feel like right now where we're at, specifically New York, you know, minorities, we want to bring about change, but we don't know how. It's easy. You just do it. You don't ask for permission. You just get it done. If you have the money to finance it, you put the team together, yeah. and you go. Back then, David Dinkins was the mayor, but mm -hmm. he was on his way out. He was in his last week in office with Raymond Kelly. So when I went to them with the idea, they laughed. I mean, they said, this ain't going to work. What, are you kidding me? Who's going to turn in a toy, uh, a gun for, for a toy? In exchange for a toy, yeah. And, and it, believe me, it became the biggest thing to ever hit the city of New York. And after that, you know, taxi drivers were getting killed 60 a year. Two, sometimes three in a week. Okay, that's when I came to know about you mm -hmm. with the Taxi and Limousine right. Commission. What was your title specifically? I was the founder of the New York State Federation of Taxi Drivers. That's amazing. Yeah. And what we did, they had no representation. Mm -hmm. They had no one to speak for them. They were getting killed like flies. Never 
did any politician attend the funeral. Wow. Never did the mayor acknowledge that these guys were getting killed. You know, and and there was there was three weeks they killed twelve of them. Why do you think that was that that nobody cared? They didn't care. You know what? When there's no media attention, when no one, when when the media isn't looking, politicians hide. They only come out when there's an opportunity to be on TV to to get on camera, and that's what's really shameful. And do you feel like the media wasn't looking because it was minorities? Because it was cab drivers. They mean nothing. They meant wow. they meant nothing until we made it an issue. And how did you decide you were going to found? Well, they came yes. to me, and I had the access that they didn't have. These are people that you knew, cab yeah, drivers they, that you knew. One day, 25 of them showed up in my office. And that's because of your leadership skills and what they've seen you do in the community in the past. That's because they believe that I can help them create the changes that wow. they need. That's amazing. And I said, you know what? I'm not a driver. <laughs> I really don't know what I can do for you, but let me make some phone calls. So I called the mayor. I called the governor. I called local policy and says we need to create change. You got and because the, the media, mm -hmm. because there was a lot of media attention, they were all in. Yeah, of course. Because because they were going to get their piece of the camera action. Got you it. Know? That's listen, crazy. Listen, that, that's crazy. It, it, it is crazy. Yeah. You know, you get addicted to the media. I'm I'm telling you because I love the media. <laughs> and, you know, they love me. I love them. And whenever, I've seen you on TV yeah. plenty of times. I there, know. And when there's an issue <laughs> that needs to be brought to the forefront, yeah. I'm not afraid to do it. You know, th there's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. I've, I was a commissioner at the White House for eight years. I've been investigated by the CIA, by the FBI, by I was confirmed by the U.S. Senate. And I served, you know, as a volunteer commissioner wow. during the George W. Bush era. OK. And I'm proud of that. Uh, I'm, I, I've served on different boards that were really important. I'm clean as they come. I'm clean as a whistle. So I don't fear anybody. I don't do anything wrong. So I have nothing to fear. But it seems like politicians are afraid of their shadow. You know, they run for office. They have this power. And they don't use it when they're supposed to. For the people. For the people. Especially the people of the city. You know, the small businesses that take risk. You know, the people that invest their last dollar, that borrow money to open up a bodega, to open up a car wash, to open up a restaurant, a lounge, a club. I mean, go to go to our immigrant communities mm -hmm. and they're all flourishing. They you know are. They're flourishing because we're risk takers. But we are also punished severely by the city of New York. The mayor of the city of New York. Our current mayor. Has, our current mayor has no intentions of helping the governor has no intentions of helping the risk takers of the city why do you think that is because they don't understand they are, they've been politicians all their life ask de blasio if he ever had a job in life ask the governor if he ever had a job ask them if they ever owned a small business so how, Ask any elected yeah. official if they've ever owned a business. So they, they can't understand our struggles if they've never had our struggles. They've never taken risks. I understand. You know, my parents owned the bodega. You know, my father scr scratched up every dime that he could to open that bodega. And there are 6,000 rules and regulations on the city books that any one of them could be used to shut you down. So instead of the politicians embracing the people that hold the city yeah. up, the people that take the risk that employ. We employ 80% of all New Yorkers. Just walk the streets of New York one block after another. They're all small businesses employing people. Yeah. And all we get is castigated by the, F by the police department, the fire department, the department of buildings, the department of health, consumer affairs, SLA, State Liquor Authority. These people, all they do is castigate, put small businesses out of business. Guys, we are not your enemy. Yet yeah. you get Amazon that wants to come into the city, yeah. create 20, only 25,000 jobs because mm -hmm. we employ millions of people. Mm -hmm. they, they were bringing 25,000 jobs and they were getting $3 billion of our money I know, I for know. free. Yeah. You know what? I don't object to that. But be fair. Yeah. If you're giving it to them, give it to the black owned businesses, give it to the Hispanic owned businesses, give it to the Asian businesses, give it to everybody. Don't selectively choose who you're going to give our money to.
You think it's a it's racism? Wrong. You think it's racism? It's more than that. It's ignorance. It's not understanding what it is to, to get up and go to work one day. I laid carpet for 30 years. I was on my hands and knees for 30 years building my what I have today. Okay? And with the stroke of one Dominican inspector who they used, uh -huh. okay, to, to do the dirty work, yeah. they shut my marina down. Okay, so we're going to switch gears right now. So we're going to talk about a huge story that's been in the news for the past few months. People might not know this. You were the owner of La Marina. I was one of the owners. One of the owners yes. of La Marina, but you were very much in the forefront. I built it. You built it. I was there every day. Start from the beginning. So was La Marina just a park? Well, La Marina was a junkyard. Okay. That at one time was owned, was managed by these people that were selling drugs in there. Okay. Bringing drugs in through the water, supposedly. So the city shut it down and they did what you call an RFP, a request for proposal. So people bid it on it, yeah. including myself. Mm -hmm. I lost, okay? I lost it to these Jewish to these Jewish partners. Okay. And when I lost it, I said, my God, why did I lose it? You already, you already knew what you wanted to do there? Oh, yes, I knew. I okay. spent $100,000 wow. doing a mock-up, showing the plans. Like a proposal. A proposal. Got it. Professionally done with everything I wanted to do. They said, no, no, this is too big. We don't want this in the community. We, we want to, you know, we want to. So these Jewish guys, uh, got together and said they were going to have rowboats and it was going to be, you know, where people can go and barbecue. Nice and gentrified. Family, very gentrified. <laughs> Boom, they got the contract. But three years went by. They did nothing with it. They didn't have the it money. It just sat there? It just sat there. Wow. They had, didn't have the money to build it. So they found me and I said, I'd love to come in. Oh, they sought you. Yeah, they sought me and they put out a request for investors. Got it. And here I came. And when I went, they said, well, we also want a restaurateur to come in with you. So I found this restaurateur. We became friends, a French guy. But he had no money. So Fernando, good guy, lends him a million and a half. I put up a million and a half. Not a million and a three half. Three million dollars. Three wow. million dollars. And we put it up to build the place. So we built, we put $6 million. We were only supposed to put $1.8 million. That's what the city wanted. Okay. We put in $6 million to create a beautiful state-of-the-art facility that had no water, no electric, no sewer, no, had nothing. We bought everything in. We built the infrastructure. We worked day and night. I worked 18 hours a day with the contractor, Saturdays and Sundays, for seven months to get this place built in seven months. Wow. Record breaking. That's crazy. Because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. I make things happen. Okay? We open it for six years. We are the best. Everyone loves us. We go through three Italian inspectors, one Puerto Rican inspector. They love us. They said, Fernando, you've helped, helped us bring crime down. People are happy. A lot of people go there. All of a sudden, I went there. Oh, <laughs> plenty of lot, times. A lot of celebrities went there. A lot of <laughs> basketball players, baseball yeah. players, football players, athletes. You name it. Everyone yeah, went it, to it was the place to go. It was a beautiful place. Yeah, it really was. Never had an issue. Mm -hmm. Never had a problem. When I say never had a problem, of course, once in a while you're gonna get two girls wanting to scratch each other over a guy or two guys fighting over a girl. Yeah, big deal. Mm -hmm. You escort them out and you tell them come back next week. You know. Yeah. All of a sudden. They, the city, this inspector, I call him and I say, like every year, could you please come and help us train the bartenders, make sure, you know, they understand the, the severity of selling to a minor, yeah. not asking ID and all that. He said, well, that's not our job. I said, wow. For the last six years, everyone from the department would come here to help us do it. But they were different but, inspectors. But different inspectors, yeah. Got it. And... <clears throat> Bottom line was that this guy had it in. I don't know if it was hate for me or envy or or, or simply the, the fact that I complained about him because he would shut every block down to get to La Marina. I'll tell you that much. At one point, it got to like 
I can't make it to La Marina. Ex I could get to like uh, by uh, Cibao. That was about it. Then after that, it's like, how am I going to make it to La Marina? I'm going to have to come walk like three blocks. No, no. Everything was closed. You'd have to walk literally a half mile to a mile with heels. Yeah. I felt more. I felt worse for the women. Yeah. We, and then we did it. But and then as you got to La Marina, every sidewalk is broken. OK. Owned by the city. The brushes getting there are terrible and they're owned by the parks department there's a broken sewer line right as you're getting to the marina that smells like stench for three years that doesn't happen in tavern on the on the green yeah. it doesn't happen to the 79th street bow basin it doesn't happen to all these white owned concessions it doesn't happen to people that are out in in central manhattan it happens to people like us that are in the outer boroughs um and or, or in the outskirts of the borough where people just don't care. Yeah. You call your councilman, eh, okay, we'll see what we can do. Do nothing. You call the parks and do nothing. Everyone's do nothing. And then they're saying that everyone is helping me out because I'm Fernando Mateo and I have power. I don't have no power. I have power if you think I have power. If you, if you don't think I have power, I've got no power. Okay. So because I complained about him, and because the police department uses the state liquor authority to punish what their actions are, the state liquor authority comes, pulls your license, you're out of business. That's insane. You know, so that's what, you know, we got tickets for being closed. Could you believe you get a ticket for being closed? Wow. It's unheard of. We got tickets for, I got five tickets for extension cords. I got five tickets because we confiscated an illegal bottle of alcohol from a woman that had it in her pocketbook, took it away at the door. SLA came and said, you're selling illegal liquor. What's this? How did you get this bottle? Sir, we just confiscated it from a lady. Yeah. Well, you're not supposed to. I said, sir, we have a half a million dollars worth of alcohol in our cages. Why would you have a bottle? Why yeah. would I have a bottle like that? Yeah. They gave us tickets for everything that you can, birthday candles. Okay, when you go when you go to a place and it's your birthday, yeah. they light up a candle yeah. for you for flair, right? A little uh, thing, a sparkler. Yeah, they gave us five tickets: illegal fireworks, possession of fireworks, uh, distribution of fireworks, use of fireworks. I mean, you name it. They accumulated seventy nine tickets so that it would look like if we are a disaster, yeah, out of control. We much. are yeah. totally out of control. Mm -hmm. All all of a sudden, the city hall freaks out. Uh, the Parks Department freaks out. Instead of them coming to us and saying, we want to understand, Health Department, why you issued these people five tickets for rat droppings that were 300 feet away from their kitchen. We want to know, NYPD, why you issued them a ticket for this, 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 and that. What's the reason? Why did you do it? Instead of protecting small businesses, they come down on us so hard. So... In order for me to earn $3 million, I have to earn $6 million because three, my partner is the government. So I gave $3 million to the government, I kept three. You know how many years I had to work and struggle? There are people that never in their lives, in their entire life will make that kind of money. These people took it away from me in one day. This isn't about me. This is about the bodega owners, about the club owners, about the lounge owners, the restaurant owners, people that take risks. People of color are at risk from this city yeah. and this mayor and this administration. We are at risk because they don't want us. They don't like us. I have reached out to the mayor many, many a times, doesn't even pick up the phone. But when he wanted me to raise money for him, he picked up, Fernando, my friend, how are you? Wow. Can you please raise $18,000, $20,000, $30,000 for me for this event? Uh, well, Mayor, let me see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. Doesn't pick up a call that I made to him. Why? Because the New York Post decided to accuse me of pay to play. I don't know what pay to play is. Wait I've never paid to play is when you, you somebody gives you something, you give them something. Got it. This mayor has never given me anything. This city has never given me anything. But you've given back. I've given back over. I've given back more than all of these politicians together. You put them, you put all 52 council members and senators and assemblymen and congressmen and you ask them, what have you given this city? And I guarantee you. I've given more to this city than all of them put together. And this is how I get paid back. Why don't you then run for mayor? You know, I've never thought. The media asks me that all the time. 
Every day I walk the streets and people stop me and say, you should be the mayor. You because you be are me. You, you, you are me. I Let me tell you, I've never thought about running for office in my life. Until? You know, I can't say until because it's I'm a businessman. But this city is my city. This city is the city that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. This city is the city where my people, my community, my black brothers, my Spanish brothers, my Chinese brothers, this is the city that we built. And these politicians and these city agencies are taking it away from us. But is it because people like you don't run? It, you know what? It's Sometimes I say they don't deserve someone like me. Wow. You know but why? But the city does. You, you, you know why? Why? Because people love to scrutinize people. Mm -hmm. You know, people love to pick on people. Like Ocasio? You know, yeah, exactly. She, she's like the most second talked about politician behind Trump. I love her. I love everything she stands for. Again, she is me. But they are destroying they're her. Trying to. They're tr they well, trying the to. The media. Yeah, they try to beat you up yeah. as much as they can. Not the media. I got to say the media has been good to me okay. because I've done the right thing. But you know what? It's getting to the point where I'm saying, you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll decide to run one day for one mayor day. of the city. Well, maybe. Just, you know what? For one term, just to create the necessary structure, the necessary changes that this city needs. We need it. To protect small businesses, to protect the job creators, to protect these, these elected officials, legislate laws that have hurt small businesses in every which way. You know, you take a small restaurant and you tell them, now you have to pay them not eight fifty an hour because they're getting tips. You gotta pay them fifteen dollars an hour. You know why? Because the celebrities call the governor. So Cele he'll answer any celebrity's phone. I mean, uh, Cardi B calls the governor. He'll pick up the phone before it rings. Okay, <laughs> the mayor will do the same. Why? Because they love the attention. They love. But you call and see if you're gonna get them on the phone. So they create legislation without consulting with the people that are taking the risks with the people that are out there hiring and creating employment. They create laws that put them out of business. Now, let me ask you a question. What can we as the people do? A lot of people feel like they don't know where to start or what to do, and especially a lot of like immigrant business owners. Some of them might not know the language. Some of them might not understand the system. Some of them just get shut down and, and just go away. Small, like, what can you do? Like, what are your resources? Small, small businesses need to come together and 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 create an uproar they need they need to rise okay they need to know that if they don't come out and fight for their business that they can get shut down the same way i did a lot of businesses uh, have been oh yes and you know what the governor doesn't care the mayor doesn't care their agencies don't care they don't listen to anybody and it's a shame now that brings me to this question do you feel as though the reason is because all of our neighborhoods are being gentrified? Do, do you feel like they just want these businesses to go away so that now a Starbucks can come, a T-Mobile can come, uh, uh, you know, a supermarket, a food emporium? Is that the reason you, why you think we're being targeted and nobody is caring? You, you hit the nail on the head. You really hit the nail on the head with this one. Gentrifiers are very smart people. Mm -hmm. They are educated. Very. In some cases have no money or very little money, mm -hmm. so they move into our communities. They join the community boards. Yes. They buy their places, and then they start targeting the businesses that are keeping their, their va the value of their property down. And they start using 311. They criminalize the 311 system by constantly calling and complaining about a business. Now the cops have to investigate. Because if they don't, they get hammered at one police plaza. And let me put this out there. These are businesses that we've patronized, enjoyed, and lived with for years. And now people from other areas are coming in and saying, you can't have these businesses anymore in the area that you were born and raised to it. And that, that, that's, exa that's exactly what they're doing. They join the community boards, and the community boards are against them. They turn them against them. You go, you go up to Inwood, mm -hmm. and you look at the faces of the community board. It's not the faces of the people is that part partly our fault because we're not joining community boards we're too busy working 
We're too busy trying to raise our kids. We're too busy trying to do the important things. These people are, are, are focused on one thing and one thing only. Taking property over. Property value. Taking over. Gentrifying. Getting us out. And when they make their money, then they leave to the suburbs. In the meantime, you know, as I was growing up, this, this was called the city that never sleeps. Yes. This city has been asleep now for the last, I don't know, eight years. It has. This city is not the same anymore. You go uptown, there's not one club anymore. No, there's they not. They shut down every club in Inwood. They find reasons. Rather than going and saying, listen, we need for you guys to make this, this and this adjustment. Mm -hmm. We want to work with you. We want to help you. No, they go in with 10 cop cars, all the city agencies, and they find anything and everything to That's shut wrong. you down. Yeah. And they've shut down seven businesses. When are these people going to wake up? These seven businesses represent 500 jobs. Why do you feel like we're asleep, though? Because the city, you can't make any noise here anymore. You know, noisy communities are healthy communities. You know, you get people that have stereos in their cars that are worth more than the cars. If they drive by your business and they stop, the neighbors complain about your business because that car stopped. It's not your responsibility. It's the cop's responsibility. We need to be able to work better yeah. with the city agencies. They need to understand that their business is not to put us out of business. Their business is to help us grow and build because we are in neighborhoods where white people would not come in and open up a bodega. Of course they won't not. come in and open up a, a multi a, a multi uh, center. center. Yeah. They won't come in and do and take the risks that we do. But they will move in. They will impose their their will. Mm -hmm. They will join the community board. They will basically pull the trigger on the six thousand rules and regulations that are on the books. They will criminalize the three one one system and the nine one one system. And the city doesn't give a damn. The mayor doesn't have the balls to tell his city agencies, hey, we need to protect small businesses. You know what? We don't need to protect Amazon. We need to protect the small businesses that are here that have 60 jobs, 70 jobs, 100 jobs, 200 jobs. La Marina lost 300 jobs. That's insane. Yeah. 300 people lost their job. I'm here not because of La Marina. It's, it's water. It, it's spilt milk. Yeah. I can't pick it up and drink it anymore. Yeah. I lost it. You know, I gave it up. I walked away because I just couldn't deal with the bureaucracy. But it should never happen to anyone. At least I'm making money. Yeah. You know, I'm a millionaire. I can do it. Can I ask you a you question? Know, sure. Why do you still care after all this, <laughs> after all this that has been done wrong to you? Because after after you feel like the system is broken, after you feel like our government doesn't care about us, why do you still care? Why are you still so passionate? Because... Uh, because it's my it's in my communities that this is happening. Understand, I've never forgotten where I come from. I am Fernando Mateo, the same kid that dropped out of school at 14 and worked his ass off to be where he's at. I, I've never thought that I am bigger than who I am. I am who I am. I will fight for my right. You know, there's going to be people that could be upset at me. I don't give a damn. You know why? Because I've earned a living. I've earned my money. Yeah. I didn't get it through a city agency or through politics. You know, right now, if, if you ask every candidate that's running for mayor, ask them one question. In the last 20 years, what have you done for a living? You know, when you buy a loaf of bread and mm -hmm. you leave it out yeah. one day, it's still soft the next day. Mm -hmm. You leave it out for two days, it starts getting stale. You leave it out for three days and it's hard like a rock. Mm -hmm. You know, these politicians are stale. They don't go to work to create change for the better. They go to work to see if they can get an interview on TV. They go to work to see if something, an incident happens in their community so they can talk about that incident. Guys, talk about the small businesses in your community that are being shut down. Talk about the moms and the pops and the people that are struggling to raise their kids. They open up a barber shop. They open the health department comes in and shuts them down because there was too much hair on the floor. Guys, just come in and tell them, "Hey, guys, yeah. you have to sweep the floor." There is no you sympathy. Know, there's, there's, no, there's no sympathy. There's no connection. There's no love for our people. That's, that's the bottom line. There, you know, it it hurts. It hurts me more than what you can understand because when you've lived 
the life that I've lived. When you've worked 18 hours a day for 20 years, seven days a week, without taking a vacation, without living, I gave up my childhood. I became a kid again at 40. I became a kid again because when I was six, 15, 14, 15, 16, I was a man. I was too busy working. People that know me that go back to 1976 when I opened up my little carpet store on Avenue A between Houston and 2nd Street, the entire Lower East Side could tell you, the people in the Baruch houses, in Madison houses, in, 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 in the Vladics on Avenue D, you name it. I was there. I used to get up at five in the morning, throw cards under doors, trying to pick up one customer, trying to pick up one job a day. I used to throw cards under 10 buildings a day by myself with a backpack, okay? I know what it is to work, but I hate when someone is sitting in an office legislating policies that would, that, that's going to affect my business without mm -hmm. understanding what I do for a living. First, you consult and you understand what the needs of the community are. You understand what the business community needs. And then you move forward with, with legislating whatever it's gonna be. But first you need to understand what you're doing. They don't understand business. They've never owned a business. They've never worked for a small business. All they know how to do is legislate. And I feel like they're never gonna understand. You know who's going to understand? You're going to understand. If you run for mayor and you get an office, you're going to understand the issues that our communities have. Listen, let me tell you something. The worst thing that could happen to this city mm -hmm. is for the residents of this city to continue electing the stale politicians that are still there. Guys, if you've been in politics 16 years, damn it, leave. Go find the job. They're not going to do that. Go learn how what it is to make a living the real way, the way you and I do it every single day. They're never I get do up that. every day. Listen, I could have retired years ago. Mm -hmm. I get up every day and I work my ass off and I enjoy it. And every day I help people. I help my people whether it's the bodega owners, whether it's the cab drivers, whether it's an ex-con that can't get a job because he's got a record. You know, I begged the governor to pardon all these kids that came out of our program, to pardon them because they were in for misdemeanors, for mm -hmm. minor shit. They were in jail for minor things. They can't get a job because they have a record. And they wouldn't? They wouldn't pardon these kids. If they were to pardon a lot of these kids that were in for minor offenses, yeah. they could go out and get real jobs. Yeah, because that's what creates the cycle. You give them a record at 14 years old, and that's it. The rest of their life, they, when it it's, says, have you ever been convicted of a crime? They got to check yes. <laughs> they can't be anything good yeah. in life. Yeah, no, I Unless understand. they go into business for, for themselves. And if they do, then they're at the mercy of the 6,000 rules and regulations that the city has in the books. Could you believe Mayor de Blasio spent $27 million dollars trying to investigate or find out what these 6,000 rules and regulations are. Wow. And guess what? He got nothing. They didn't give him a response for the $27 million. You know what? I can get that same thing done with maybe $50,000. The same thing that costs $27 million. Mm -hmm. You know, the mayor's wife spent a billion dollars on mental health yes. programs. I'm aware. You know how many patients she helped? Two. Never. Read the papers. A billion dollars. God, if we had a billion dollars, if we had a bit, oh my God, what would I do with a billion dollars? You know what? a huge initiative, I, though. It's that, like they made a big deal about this initiative. It's cameras. It's it's the media. There was events. It's, I went to some of the events. There was announcements. We talked about it on the radio. And you're telling me two people were helped. That's what I read in the New York Post. Although the New York Post is a questionable paper. You know, they're very and sensationalized. I would, and, and, I, and I would tell my community yeah. to boycott them. The New York I Post. Would tell, I would tell my Hispanic brothers and sisters, my black brothers and sisters, my Chinese brothers and sisters, my, all the immigrants in this, don't buy that paper. New York Post. Got don't it. buy that paper. Can I ask you a question, sure. Fernando? Why do you, you know, I'm Hispanic, I'm Dominican, born and raised here in New York. Why do you feel like Hispanics don't revolt more? Why do you think we don't boycott? Why do you think we're not on, in the streets? Why do you think we're not in an uproar as to what's being done to our communities 
our businesses, our people. Why? Because they're too busy working. You think so? Understand. Because understand. I'm busy working, listen, but I could probably do it listen, if I wanted to. Yeah, but you know what? Your parents and my parents. Yeah. The newer generation. The newer that generation. Are, that, That's that, what that, I'm talking yeah, about. The newer gener- Why do you think the newer generation is not out there? Let's say like the newer generation of our black brothers. When they're out here in these streets, marching, boycotting, causing an uproar, Black Lives Matter. Why is Why aren't our kids doing the same thing? Lack of leadership. Lack of leadership. We have very little, very little leaders. So we need to organize. We need to organize. You know, you, you're Dominican. I'm proud of yes. you. Yes. You've got a very powerful tool right here. You have this mic. Yeah. Okay. You're here. People are listening to you. You know, it's people like you that can help people like me organize people like our younger generation to come up and fight. Seven businesses, all the lounges and clubs of town are shut down. I don't have anywhere to go uptown. No, the, and, and do you think that any one of those 500 employees or those business owners want to come out? You know what? I lost La Marina because I defended them. I came out and they were ticketing them and fining them. And I called up the state liquor authority and I said, we need to put an end to this. This a police inspector is doing more harm than good. And that's when and you, you were targeted? Guys, yeah. And, and I went and I set up a meeting with the SLA, the 20 business owners the inspector, and two chiefs. And everyone told their story. After that day, Fernando Mateo was the target. It was like a vendetta against you. I was the target. And you know what? The city of New York allowed it. They allowed the abuse of power against me. Do you regret it? I don't regret anything that I do. You know why? Because I did it for a good cause. Could I I have done it a little differently? Maybe. But there was no nothing else I could do. I had gotten on my hands and knees and begged this guy, please don't shut down every street yeah. leading to La Marina. And he didn't care. Don't shut down every parking lot yeah. that people can park and walk to La Marina. I I begged him 15 times before I complained. What else do you do? What can you do? I called the mayor to explain to him, look, this is your concession i'm the concessionaire i need help we are the largest concession in the city we employ more people than any other concession in the city and he didn't pick up he didn't pick up he didn't pick up i wrote to him numerous times finally i got so fed up and angry i wrote him a text that said you know mayor maybe if i were black you would respond because as you said Black people organize. Black Lives Matter. They have shopped and mm-hmm. they've got people to fight for them. Can you believe that that's the only time this man took 30 seconds of his time to reply to me? Because you hit him with a hurt. Yeah, no, no. To reply to me, to tell me it is very inappropriate. You know what, Mayor? Why didn't you answer the 50 calls that I made to you? The 20 texts that I sent you? Why didn't you respond to me one time? When you called me needing money, I was there for you. Why couldn't you pick up the phone for me? Because all I was doing was watching out for 300 jobs that this city has. Yet you have the balls to go and fight for Amazon. I like the Amazon deal. But you know what? It's not a fair deal because they're not giving it to all of the mom, mom and pop yeah. stores. If you're going to do it for them, do it for us do it too. For, do it for everybody. Yeah, I feel It you. should be equal opportunity. You know, you shouldn't treat me like nothing. You know, when you've then, done so much. And, and you know what? I'm proud of what I've done. I will continue to do what I do. I will continue to build business. And we thank you. I will continue to work. I will continue to do what I have to do. I, I've got to thank you all yeah. for giving me the opportunity to tell the city of New York what is going on? I'll tell you why I wanted you here. I feel like this is not getting press. I feel like it's our neighborhoods. I feel like we're being pushed out. I feel like our businesses are being closed. I feel like this is affecting me directly. And, and it, it's affecting people like me, you know, Dominicans, New Yorkers, people from uptown. And I feel like the media doesn't care. Politicians don't care. And nobody is really talking about it. Nobody. So nobody I wanted to sit anything. down with you and really delve into this and, you know, get 
you were the first person that came to mind. Thank you. Because of, of the issue with La Marina, because of everything that you have ever done, because you represent us New Yorkers, us Dominican, and, and you've done so much. You know, I've watched you on TV for years, and I've, I knew exactly who you were, and I want to thank you for everything you've done for our community. I want to thank you for being such a a stellar Dominican, an amazing New Yorker for for giving back and, and for still giving back after so much has been done to hurt you and to take away from you. And the fact that you're still sitting here and you're still so passionate. And, and I asked you if, if you would change what you did and you still said no. And for representing for our people, like I really, really wanted to sit across from you and say this to you in person. Like, I thank you. I admire you. I commend you. I don't want you to ever give up. And I personally want to work with you because I feel like I'm one of those people that could be leading but doesn't know how. You know what? I wish that that the mayor is listening to this because one of the things that I would do immediately day one yeah. is find people like you to monitor the city agencies, to monitor the power that they're using against, against the small businesses, mm -hmm. to monitor the abuse of power that certain city agencies use to shut businesses down. Guys, we cannot, I've always said, we need to be proactive, yes. not reactive. Mm -hmm. We need to know that, hey, you go to Yankee Stadium, yeah. There are 60,000 people going there every game. How does the community deal with this? They have cops. They have traffic controllers. Organized. What, what do they do when there's a fight? They separate it. Then they make an arrest. They don't shut Yankee Stadium down because somebody's dealing drugs in the corner. Yeah. They don't shut the restaurants down because there's mice droppings that come from the subways. All, all types of craziness. Do you, <laughs> do you know, I would I would put together a team of my, of of people that can rate the city like we get a rating like an a if you're good or yeah. b if you're mm -hmm. to rate the city do you know that the biggest problem that restaurants and and bodegas and this is is rats but guess why because they live in the subways it's a city problem it's a city but no they give they write you up they shut you down they you know, guys. You can't walk past some trash and there's like a million rats in there. <laughs> exactly. That's the city. It's That's the, not the restaurant. It's, it's the city. What do we do? Shut the city down? You know, when a when a when a, a corrupt cop is arrested, do we shut the department down? When a corrupt DOB agent that we've seen many of them go out in handcuffs because they're, they're taking money from the real estate guys, when they get arrested, what do we shut the Department of Buildings down? No, because that's one of theirs. Yes. Yeah, well, you know what? It's not fair. It's not. You know, we need you. You know, the mayor of this city needs to know that what's good for the city is good. Should be good for the small business people that keep the city in business. Yeah. That keep people employed you know there's a lot of people in this city that are immigrants that don't speak english they'll either speak chinese or indian or mandarin or or whatever other language mm -hmm. spanish they don't speak english guess what guess where they're gonna get a job they're gonna get a job in a small business mom and pop and mom and pop store yeah, we're so them. when you shut that mom and pop store down guess what what you're doing you are putting these people out on the street and that's what we need to stop you know, the city needs to have a mayor that has been in business, a mayor that has had a job. <laughs> Let's start with first having a job. Okay. Secondly, preferably, if you have a small business, you'll understand what we go through. Yeah. What we live with. Okay. Every single day. And then someone that's compassionate enough to want to help build. Have our a heart. Communities. And have care heart. about our community. You know what? That's what's what, missing. Listen, when Harlem was burning when East New York was burning, when Washington Heights was burning, when all these areas that were considered slums were burning, guess what? Guess who started opening the restaurant and the bodega and, the, and this and that? It was our people investing in their community. Really the city didn't invest in these areas. The city didn't say, here's $100,000, open a spot here. And, but you know what? We're very quick to spend $60,000, $80,000 a year to keep a kid in jail. But you know what? We don't have the nerves to tell that kid when he graduates college, the city's going to give you $100,000 to open up a small business. No. You know, or to buy a cab or to do something. It's cheaper yeah. to build. It costs more to destroy. That's what these people don't understand because they're entrenched. They're in a bubble. I call the city council speaker, Corey Johnson. Uh, yeah, Corey Johnson. Call him up. Hey, I need help. 
to 300 jobs here. You should look at what these 79 violations are. They're really nothing. They, no, they make no sense, but please sit down with me. Understand it. No sympathy. Not, not one callback. Not one. But talk about anything that's going to get him on, in front of a camera. He's there. But he is there like, like lightning. <laughs> Something falls from the trains, breaks a, a windshield of a car. Councilman, the MTA has to be accountable for that. Boom. He comes out. We need to do a total inspection. You know, they make a... What about the seven businesses that were shut down up in northern Manhattan? What about the dozens of businesses that are shut down every single day okay. that could have an other opportunity to rectify what their problem is before you shut them down? I'm not saying to allow people to break the law. No, absolutely not. I'm not saying take away quality of life. Yeah. What I'm saying is give opportunity to people that that are taking a risk. Yeah. Work with them. Now, let me ask you, to wrap things up, what do you think us as a people can do? A business owner, an immigrant, someone who lives in Inwood, someone who's facing all, all these same issues. How do you think we can come together, organize, and bring about change? Stop voting for the same politicians you've been voting for for the last 20 years. Get rid of them. Bring in new blood. Bring in the Ocasio Cortezes. Bring in the the Salazars. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bring in the new blood, the young blood, people that know and understand and have held the job. She was a bartender. Yeah. You know, she worked for a living, guys. Yeah. You know what? Work with people. I don't agree with everything she says, but you know what? It's a new. It's new ideas. We need to get rid of these old ideas. Don't vote for anybody that's been in office for the last. 16 years they're stale it's like eating uh, uh it's like trying to cut a a, a a a loaf of bread that's been sitting on your counter for a week it's gonna crack they're not gonna create change they're not gonna do what we what we want them to do you know they're not gonna they're not gonna be effective because they don't know what it is to work you know so that's where we need to start is by finding new faces Voting for new people, bringing and let the, those new people know what your agenda is, what you're fighting for. You know what? Give money to those that are going to create change. You know, that doesn't mean that you're paying to play. No. You know? It means you're supporting. It means you're supporting someone that has common sense and ideas. And, and the Johnson, yeah. loudmouth, city councilman doesn't know what it is to own a business, never met with me to discuss why 300 people were out of a job. The mayor never running for president. Could you believe this? <laughs> a city that is falling apart with empty stores and people struggling to make ends meet. And he believes he needs a promotion to be president of the United States? Come on, people. <laughs> Black people, wake up. Spanish people, immigrants, wake the hell up. Vote for people that are going to create the changes that you need. You know, that's the bottom line, man. You know what? And if the elected officials that are listening to this, hear this, call me. Bring, let's bring what happened to La Marina to the forefront. And let's bring what happened to the seven businesses that were closed to the forefront. Let's talk about all the businesses that are shut down every single day. People that are struggling, that owe money, that borrowed money, that freaking don't have the money to, to lose. You know, you're killing people. Eight cab drivers killed themselves. Nine killed yeah. themselves. There is a lot going on in you our know, city. There, there on, really guy, is a lot. One guy took it right to the mayor's front gate. And Gracie blew, Mansion? And blew his head off. In front of the gate of Gracie Mansion, where the mayor comes in and goes out every single day. He parked his car there, took a shotgun, blew his head off. Wow. Mr. Mayor, you've never said anything about the changes that can and should be created. You know, there's a lot that can be done with little. You don't need $27 million to figure out that 6,000 freaking rules and regulations make no sense. You know? There are... <laughs> look... We could go uh, on forever. You know, I'm not going to give up. Yeah. I'm not going to give up my platform, okay, to anyone because my platform is better than all of their platforms put together because I'm going to speak the truth. Some people may like it. 
Some people may not. That's always the case. I though. always say, you don't like noise? Move to Long Island. Move to Westchester. You don't belong in New York. Have the balls to tell these gentrifiers that move to the suburbs. No te gusta. Vete de aquí. Vete pal carajo. <laughs> you know? What the hell, man? Fernando, thank you so much for coming up, man. I felt like this was a conversation me and you needed to have. Thank you so much. Thanks for being so passionate. Thank you for being so open, so honest, and 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 for risking it all for the sake of, of the people having a voice. You know what? If they want to take what I have, they're going to have they're going to have to kill me. E. You know why? Because I've worked You like never going to stop? I've I've worked like an animal yeah. to get where I'm at. And if anyone's offended, all you need to do is look at yourself in the mirror and listen to this interview and, and say to yourself, "You know what? As an elected official, what have I done other than collect a paycheck?" from the taxpayers? Have I listened to my constituents? Have I done anything to create change? You know, there's a councilman, his name is Espinal. Finally, I'm gonna end with him. You gotta take your hat off to Espinal. You know what this guy did? Every time you'd go into a restaurant or you'd go into a lounge or something and you simply did this, because the music was good or bachata, you went like this, right? Yeah. They'd write you up a summons for dancing. Wow. Dancing. The SLA would suspend your liquor license for dancing. Just for catching a for bop dancing. off your own music? For dancing. Okay. A $10,000 fine for dancing. Espinal listened to the clubs in his community mm -hmm. and the lounges and the bars. But guess what? They were all white owned. They were the ones. And that's they, the difference. The white people went to the councilman, told them what the problem was, and that councilman solved that problem. Now we don't have to worry if you get up and dance a little, and, and dance a little bit. You're, <laughs> you're not going to get a ticket for that anymore. Well, shout out to him you for know, taking care and, of that. And I also want to say, most cops are great cops. I have family that are cops. I love them. Cops are good people. Yeah. But you'll always find a bad cop. Yeah. And that bad cop could make your life miserable. And that's what this one Dominican inspector did to me. He made my life miserable. One of your he own. Took, he took away my livelihood at La Marina. He, ba he set out for a goal and he accomplished it. And you know what? I know that I begged you and I know that I asked you and I know that I did call for a meeting to not rat you out, but call you out in front of you. And what you did was come back with me with vengeance because one guy crashed into a police car in front of La Marina. It's not my fault. I wasn't driving the car. Arrest the guy. But don't shut my business down. But you know what? They won. They they won this. this they one. won. They won the battle, but they haven't won the war. Amen. And I'll tell you <laughs> one thing. This city with the right mayor could be the best city in the world. It could it could be it, it could become again the city that never sleeps. I can't wait for you to announce that you're running for mayor. You should come and head one of my departments here because you would understand maybe consumer affairs which basically monitors a lot of the small businesses yeah you know they thank need you so me much. they need they, me they, and they, we need you well let's <laughs> let's see what we can do together hey <laughs> thanks fernando thank appreciate you. you thank you